the Fanti FNA34Q. This is a CT meter. These single meters are extremely well made. They got a disc with a center of glass. Um, okay, I said before the type is FNA34Q. It's a three phase four wire meter. 333.3 revolutions per kilowatt hour. It's a blank 5 meter that reads 3 times 5 amps, 230 volts, 50 hertz. Um, this meter was used obviously on a 150 to 5 ampere supply as a multiplier of times 30 was attached to the meter. I run the meter at the moment of a 3 phase supply and um, yeah, the load is about 10 amps per phase, but 9.5 amps per phase. That's about what I get out of it. Well, it's a bit overloaded, but it doesn't overhead the meter. Okay, time to take the cover off. I've taken the bottom screw off already. Look in the inside of the meter. I'll take the register off to access the disc. And then I can see the inside. Here we have a close look at the disc. Got numbers from 0 to 100 and it's got a glass spindle. Very well made. Good British quality. If you look at one element of the meter, this particular the windings underneath is the, uh, the actual current coil. And this meter is rated for 5 ampere, maximum about 10. And the voltage element or voltage coil is above the current coil. This will create a flux, induces eddy currents in the disc, and it makes the meter disc advance. meter the three elements are 90 degrees apart. Uh, some meters have the elements 120 degrees apart or other ones have them acting each on its own disc or sometimes on two discs. So this three phase meter has one disc in it. This particular screw is a balance adjustment. Correct calibration each metering element should be balanced to provide the same torque. We got two adjustments, one is for the light load and one is for the inductive or the power factor. I always get a pleasure out of watching these discs spinning around. The brake magnet can be used for course adjustment. The meter register has a jumping dial option. Got a gear train. And as you can see with the white drum with the red numerals, there is another guiding drum next to it. And there is a counterweight in there which provides an instant uh, flick over on the actual register. So it's a partially nylon uh, gear trains and some aluminium. Aluminium gear wheels are applied in the actual meter register. The little gears in between the number wheels are called the Genevas, which um, interact between the two different number drums and advance the next register when uh, the meter is due to flick over. Also features float on magnetic bearings, which means the actual disc is suspended in a magnetic field. In the top here there's two um, uh, magnets that are repelling each other. By taking the top bearing out, I reveal the actual magnets. There's a little magnet sitting there and there's a magnet within this little bushing here. So that magnet will hold the other magnet, pull it in position and the disc is actually freely suspended. It reduces drag and wear and tear, so it needs to be properly adjusted. 
so that the disc is actually floating. And at the bottom part there is just a guide pin which keeps the disc in position. Increase the load shortly so uh, we get about a 30 amp load on the meter. And we're just going to reveal the click over between the higher digits. To make the CT meter work I had to put jumpers in between the current wires and the potential wires. Potential terminals, so you got three potentials, there's 400 volts there and there's uh, 230 between each leg to the neutral. Now for everybody who likes meters and be patient, we need to wait for city 3.3 revolutions. The little decimal number 9, which is in consta mesh all the time, is the actual meter register train. A small zero will appear and then the dial will flick over instantly. Um, that dial is mainly for testing purposes to show the actual true position of the gear train. So the meter is sitting on 10.0499.9. And it's just about to roll over. Ten thousand five hundred point zero. So an instant uh, click over of the register. The little decimal wheel, the meshed gear is a zero, and there's a printed one, and then it will uplift the uh, floating decimal to get them uh, synchronized up again for the next unit. Give it a little tap. Normally that happens. Ten thousand five hundred. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I'll also show you briefly the potential indicator um, connection which we fitted at one stage about 15 years ago. I ended up converting many meters with potential indicators uh, as to prove that potential fuses were still intact. Um, relatively simple, a uh, 2 watt 4.7 uh, correction, a 2 watt 47 kilo ohm resistor, yellow, violet, orange. Put in series and on each phase leg, and just an LED and an uh, one in nine one four, just a blocking diode in there. The LEDs run at about um, three to five milliampere, and uh, yeah, we have had no issues. And many meters were fitted with these, and they've been going. They're still going today, 20 years later. And at least when a potential fuse goes, we know that uh, we got a problem somewhere, and a meter reader will pick that up. Okay, thanks for watching. Coming up in the next metering videos is this 110 volt tri vector meter, this GEC meter, and this is a uh, KVAR meter. And I got hold, somebody gave me this email, Australia um, remote dial meter. It just came from a house. So that'll be in the next few videos.